In this video, I'm going to be going over 10 practice questions for CompTIA is A+, 220-1102, or the Core 2 exam. Now, these practice questions are going to be pretty similar to the ones you're going to see on your real exam. As I just took this exam a few weeks ago, and I uh, basically made the questions pretty similar to theirs. So, let's go over them. I'm Andrew Ramdial. I am the, one of the instructors here at Technical Institute of America. I'm the one that does all the e-learning course and some of the live classes. So if you take a course with us, I'll probably be your instructor. Let's go take a look at this now. All right, so let's get right into this practice question. Number one, it says here an administrator requests that a special computer have a different group policy than the computers joined to the domain. A technician must configure the group policy local, locally. What command will a technician will allow the technician to edit the local group policy? So in this question, you really have to know, okay, what command is going to be issued from the run box, basically, to edit group policy? Let's see if you guys know this. If you're studying, you should get this one correct. So the, the command here is GP edit, that's group policy edit, not that .exe, but that .msc or Microsoft Console. In the course, I do go over this with you pretty in depth, as when I cover group policy i show you guys how to do the mmc console how to add and remove snap pins and here's a command that actually just get you directly to uh group policy editor gp result is a command we'll use to see this is going to be run running the command prompt this is a command that's going to see what policies are applied to your computer there's no such thing as as policy that exe or gp edit.exe so beware of fake fake tools being used on your exam practice question number two a laptop user is visually impaired and requires a different coarser color. Which of the following OS utilities is used to change the color of the coarser? System, ease of, ease of access center, personalized, or devices. Now, if you go into the control panel and you want to adjust certain visually settings or, or impaired settings for people, for folks that are disabled, you would go to the ease of access center. The ease of access center, again, is something you're going to find in control panel. In the course, of course, we're going to go over that. And if you're studying, what you want to do is you want to open your control panel. And you want to go to all, know what every single one of those applets are, those utilities in control panel is, because you're going to see a question very similar just like this on your real exam. So it's in the ease of access center, am I gonna be able to adjust color settings, such as making it incredibly bright or large, uh, maybe make it all black so it's easier for people with visually impaired eyes can see it. The system here, this is gonna go more into tell you what your things like, what type of hardware you have in memory and operating system. And you could do some, con you, from there you could branch off into different configuration of windows, not disability settings. Personalize is actually going to change your desktop wallpaper and devices just to manage the devices connect, not to change the visually impaired settings. Practice question number three. A technician is using the command cat on Linux. He's issued the following command, cat a plus dot txt. What will this command do? So on your exam, you're going to want to make sure that you know your Linux command. In the exam objectives, there is a whole list of commands that you should know. Now, in the course, you know, I do a whole bunch of videos with you where I show you guys step by step what these commands do. If you're studying for your exam, the best thing to do, if you just want to pass your exam, is at least you don't necessarily have to know all the switches because it's impossible to know all the switches for the Linux commands, but you should know what they do. Before walking into the exam room or sitting to do the exam at home, look at the look at every single one of those commands. This is what this does, this is what this does. Uh, of all the Linux commands, all right? So make sure you know that. If you know your Linux commands, this one is pretty easy because if you know cat stands for concatenate, what this is gonna do is this is gonna display data in a file. So it tells you whatever is in a text file. So when they run this command here, cat uh, a plus dot txt, what, what's gonna happen is that it's gonna show them exactly what is in that text file. It doesn't do a blank output, it doesn't delete files and combine, so B, best answer. Practice question number four, a technician is setting up a desktop computer in a small office. The user will need access uh, to, the user will need to access files on a drive shared from another computer. Which of the following configuration should a technician deploy to achieve this goal? All right, configure the network as private, enable a proxy server, grant the network administrator role to the user, create a public, create a shortcut to public documents. So when you're setting up a network, one of the things we have to know for our exam is what's called profiles. When you join a computer to a network, have you ever noticed this, especially like a Windows box, you join it to a network and it basically says, 
Is this a public or a private network? Now, if it's a public, you can't share documents. But once you configure it as private network, you can then share documents. You can enable file share on the computer. So this here would be the best answer of this. Proxy server will do nothing about sharing proxy servers. I'm more used to control internet access. If you ever been to a school or like a job and you try to go to a website and they block it, that's a proxy server. Uh, we never grant users administrator roles. That's bad security. And a shortcut to public, we, there's nothing in the question that states it's a public document. Practice question number five. Someone who's fraudulently claiming to be from a government agency by calling company employees and asking for the company's bank account information describes what kind of attack. On your exam, you will have to know different security attacks. This is covered deeply in the exam objectives. Best answer here, guys, is going to be vision. Vision is basically voice vision. If you ever got an email from PayPal telling you to reset your password because somebody hacked your account, that's phishing. SMS is just text messages. Spoofing, people spoof their IP address, they may spoof a MAC address, but when it comes to actually picking up the phone, using the voice and trying to scam people out of it, trying to get financial information, that is considered vision. So vision is basically voice vision. For your exam, make sure you know all your different attacks, not just understand what they are, but understand how we can fix them. How would we be able to mitigate from vision? Vision is basically mitigated by training your users, end user training, telling people how to, hey, you know what, don't get caught in this kind of scam. A technician, so practice question six, a technician suspects a worm has been installed and needs to be removed. Which of the following would best resolve the issue? Update to all applications on the computer, running a full scan of anti-malware software, reinstalling the operating system, rebooting the computer. Okay, best answer here, guys, is gonna be, of course, to install and run antivirus, right? We're doing a full antivirus scan on a computer. Now, in the A plus exam objective, there is a part where they give you the anti, anti uh, malware removal steps, they call it. This is, an this is in the objectives 2.0. There's a bunch of steps that you have to follow. Make sure you know those step by step for your exam because they will test you on it. Now, if it says there you suspect a worm, it's installed, needs to be. Now, it's telling you in the question, it says it needs to be removed. If it needs to be removed, the best thing here to do is going to be to get the anti malware software, scan the machine, and remove it. Updates is not going to help you as the machine is already infected. Reinstalling the operating system will fix it, but you're going to erase all the data. Probably not the best thing you're going to want to do first. Uh, rebooting the machine may have no effect on this as the machine is already infected. All right, here we go to the big one. Practice question seven. The user was browsing the internet and now thinks that his computer is infected with a virus. A technician is called to investigate. Which of the following is the next step the technician should take? So if you remember what I told you before, you need to know your antivirus steps. Shut down the machine and replace it with another one. Try to use the computer and verify the symptoms of malware. Do a full system scan to remove the infection. Look for a specialized removal tool. Once again, you need to know your antivirus, your anti, your malware removal steps from the exam objectives. So the best answer here, may, a lot of people didn't get this one. I did this one with my students. A lot of people didn't get this one. A lot of people say doing a full system scan. No, the first thing you want to do is to verify that the machine is actually infected. That's actually in this the objective steps. This is how your exam will trick you. It doesn't say it's infected. If it says the technician knows the computer is infected, then you would do a full system scan and try to remove the virus, like the previous question. In this one, it's that the technician, he thinks it's called, ah, what is that, investigate. So he has to verify, maybe there's pop-ups, maybe files are encrypted, maybe there's weird display messages. Then you should, if you see that, then you would do this, but it doesn't say that. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna verify that there is malware and then you're gonna run a full system scan. Shut it down, replace it with another one. You're gonna you're gonna lose all the user's data. Specialized removal tool, but first you have to verify there is a virus. Which of the following must be maintained throughout the evidence lifecycle when dealing with a piece of computer evidence? Acceptable use, chain of custody, where it was stored, or how it was obtained. When Evidence is obtained in any type of investigations dealing with computers or even physical real life evidence that's non-computer based. You have to follow what's called a chain of custody. Now this is going to be covered in objective 4.0, operational procedures. You have to understand what these documents are. The chain of custody is the life cycle of the evidence, how it was obtained, who obtained it, where they obtained it, where they're stored, 
who had access to it. This maintains keyword for your exam, the integrity of the evidence. So make sure you understand what this is. Acceptable use is how we use a computer. Where it was stored, how it was obtained is part of the chain of custody. So make sure you know these documents for your exam. Practice question number nine, a technician found that an employee is playing games on a desktop. The company has decided that this action is against internal policies. Which of the following would inform the user of this violation? MDM, e -L -E -U -L -A, D -R -D -R -P, or AUP? The best answer is going to be called acceptable use policy. This is a policy in the organization that says what's what you could do on their computers, but what you shouldn't be doing. Every organization has this that says, hey, you can use our computers only for our work purposes. You can't use it for things such as playing games or doing your own personal work. So you should know this, not just for your exam, because sometimes they give these acronyms without actually spelling it out. Uh, disaster recovery planning is how a company rebuilds after a disaster. The EULA, this is actually when you install software, you got to click I agree to all their terms and services. MDM is what you use to manage mobile devices such as your phone. It's called mobile device management. And last question, an IT department is looking to manage a large number of new workstations using a remote desktop protocol. Which version of Windows should it be installed? You have to know the feature of Windows. This is a pretty easy one if you know what version of Windows supports what. Windows 10 Pro, Windows 11 Pro supports remote desktop, joining of domains, something home edition and starter edition does not. Make sure you know the features of different versions of Windows. All right, those are my 10 questions, guys. If you guys enjoyed this video, click the like button, subscribe to the channel. If you want me to make more videos or practice questions, if you enjoy the explanation, let me know in the comments below. I'll make some more. And uh, join me in my live classes. Join me in our e-learning courses. All the links are below, and I'll see you in the next video.